Verizon pauses Facebook ads amid growing boycott. Nearly 100 brands have reportedly joined the effort to push Facebook to do more to combat abusive content on its platform. Verizon is joined. Now, I just combat abusive content. I mean, just it wasn't long ago we were reading stories about censoring self harm posts on Facebook might do more harm than good, right? If if there's a you know person in distress engaging in self harm and broadcasting it, that's a cry for help. And if you say, well, we we don't want to share self harm posts because you know uh, someone could see that as a copycat uh, and, and 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 do the same thing, and it's like, well, then they. They might cry for help too. Like, oh, we, we we don't want our platform to be used as as a place where people can can cry for help because people might copy it. And, and what what are they doing? They're also crying for help. So you know, I, I apply that same you know fundamental reasoning, my inclination to free speech when I look at stories like this. You know, and and it's there's so many other layers of of corporate. In, uh, motivations and, and political pandering and, and, and all of this, um, but it, why why are they doing this? Right? Obviously, it's to create an advertising friendly platform more than a functional platform. But it's also a response. What what makes an advertising friendly platform? Again, it's still determined by. The consumers now it's a little bit determined by how you manipulate people into selling things or, and, or manipulate them into buying things as consumers but even with this like well, are, are you fostering abusive behavior by allowing it to be broadcast or is your platform good enough that hey well you, you can have a productive conversation you can see it as a record you can address it and i i use this you know kind of silly you know little example with you know what what if you, your neighbor posts something that's racist right and and then someone else someone who you know they met at a party in middle school a decade ago goes oh that's racism i'm going to flag that and report it to facebook and facebook goes and takes it down well now you don't know that your neighbor's racist and again you go ah yes freedom is the answer what's the question and in this case freedom of speech freedom of communication freedom to use these platforms to their fullest potential is really critical. And when you cut when out, at this point in human history with what we're capable of technologically and what the demand is for this kind of information system as, as Facebook is the social media network, right? You can say, well, Twitter and Instagram, well, Instagram is owned by Facebook and Twitter is, you know, it, it rivals it in the area that it does as an element of the online conversation. But Facebook is the social media network. You don't organize events on Twitter. You know, I mean, yeah, I know you can. People do. I don't mean to demean that. Well, you have event pages and groups and communities and all these things are Facebook. Facebook is the social network. We have the technology. We have the ability to open source this to create our own version. What stops that? Government, corporatism, intellectual property laws. And while humanity has the potential to have this am amazing, rich communications network that, that creates this beautiful hive mind for humanity that could be open source, that could be decentralized, that could be Ad free because people would pay for that. I mean, because it would be almost insignificant. You could have it as a freemium service. There, there are dozens of different ways I could come up with, even just off the top of my head. Yeah, probably a million different ways that we can achieve something better than Facebook. What we have is the poison of government in this technology. And then we have stories like this Verizon has joined a growing list of companies putting a pause on buying ads on Facebook amid a boycott meant to force the social networking giant to do more to remove abusive content from its platform. The boycott began earlier this month when six civil rights groups called on businesses to stop advertising on Facebook in July 
to push the social network to do more to combat hate speech and misinformation. Ice cream brand Ben and Jerry's outdoor product sellers, Recreational Equipment Incorporated, better known as REI, and outdoor clothing brand The North Face have already announced their support for the boycott. A Verizon spokeswoman said the company is pausing its Facebook ads, but not boycotting the company. Our brand safety standards have not changed, a Verizon spokeswoman said in an email. We're pausing our advertising until Facebook can create an acceptable solution that makes us comfortable and is consistent with what we've done with YouTube and other partners. So I'm going to bring this back to blaming it on the consumer society. And, you know, when it comes to social networks like this, hey, if the service is free, you are the product. And in this case, it's your attention that is the product. They are getting your attention. They are tricking you into giving Facebook control of your attention by saying, look, we're giving, we're connecting you with friends. Your friends are going to have your attention. And it's true, they get most of it. But now they can take a chunk of your attention that you're giving them when you're logged on and say, ha ha, we're going to sell this to advertisers now. And that's fine in and of itself when you recognize it for what it is. So that's one layer of the problem with the consumer here. But then there's this other level. And this story, when it gets to this, actually suggests that it's kind of a, that, 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 like a, there's been a leapfrog or a slingshot or a dom, like a building, like a, I don't, maybe the, it's, a, it's a, the three chains or three, three or four dominoes in the chain here. It's a, it's a little chain reaction of escalation, basically, where social justice warriors, the Karens of America, great band name still, right? The Karens of America, these six civil, what, well, hold on, I, I almost want to know what they are, but I, I don't really care. Six civil rights groups. How much you want to bet they have a lot of the same sponsors and none of them are really truly grassroots? What grassroots organization, you know, really gets together in any kind of meaningful way and says, you know what we need to do to make the world a better place? Instead of addressing racism, let's censor it on Facebook. Right? So there's this there, there's this whole other industry of false activism. It's basically about exploiting outrage in public opinion for donations for busybody, feel good, slacktivist, the SJW type uh, of, of activism. And 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 whether or not these groups are, oh my, well, it's, it's the NAAC, it's, I, don't, I doubt that. But, you know, regardless of who this is, that's what this is. This is an exploitive form of activism where they get to threaten companies, right? They get to go and threaten a company like Verizon and REI or Ben & Jerry's. Oh, they probably have people on their uh, teams, their corporate, whatever is making these decisions that, that is sympathetic to these, you know, SJW cause. They have fallen for this. Uh, I, I almost want a term for this. I mean, activism fraud. Is that, is that? I mean, that's a good term for it, but you know, it's. I almost want something like slack, like slacktivism. You know, refers to being a keyboard warrior and 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 thinking that that's how you're fighting justice. And there are plenty of ways that there are. Or, or slacktivism, like I put a bumper sticker on my car, and now I, I'm I'm you know feeling good about doing you know, contributing to the cause. You know, something where you take too much pride or you overestimate the value of your effect. And and you know to me and, and and your your own efforts are are relatively insignificant, and so that would be slacktivism. But this is something else. This is like a kind of activism fraud, where you're taking advantage of people's sympathies, uh, their their emotions, their anger, their outrage, whatever the case may be, to get donations, to create an organization where people get paid to to feel important, and there, there's it. I've been in a lot of these, you know, and I don't mean like active in, but especially with Iraq veterans against the war. I mean, this is more on the left. Uh, there's, there's, there's plenty of versions of this on the right, too. This tends to be a phenomenon of leftist politics, tending to be more emotionally driven uh, at, at an exploitive level 
where it's really easy to, to play on that social justice warrior mentality and guilt trip people and say, well, you at least better sign my petition and give us $10 a month, you know, you know, that kind of thing. And with, with what they get to do then is threaten corporations who are selling products to the general public and say, look, we can manipulate the general public to get angry enough looking at you that you will lose business. And so there, there's another level of fraud here where these organizations attempt to commit a fraud against the general public saying, look, because Verizon is advertising. Think about this. In order for this to happen, someone had to be ready to say, you should boycott Verizon because they're advertising on Facebook. And you go, what? Surprise, surprise. Like, one soulless mega corporation and another are doing business like wow if I, and i do business with both of them as someone who hears this message and understands better than 99 percent of the population the evils of both verizon and facebook i still do business with both of them and, and i'm not saying oh and therefore you should too because it would be better if everybody you know had an alternative and that, they, that we should be looking for that. Okay. By the way, um, the the here, here it is. It was the NW, the NAACP is one of them. The Anti Defamation League, the NAACP, Sleeping Giants, Colors of Change, Free Press, and Common Sense say that boycotting advertising on Facebook will pr put pressure on the company to use its seventy billion dollars in annual advertising revenue to support people who are targets of racism and hate and to increase safety for private groups on the site. Was there ever a problem with private groups being dangerous for people? That's the one place, like, you create a private group, you kick anybody out, you delete any posts if it's your private group. Like, how is... I get it, yeah. You can still go in there and threaten people like you could in, in any other venue for that conversation. Uh, so, you know, and, and yeah, they want censorship. The groups are asking Facebook to make several changes, including creating a separate moderation pipeline for hate speech, allowing certain people who have been targeted with harassment or hate to talk to a live person at Facebook and telling advertisers how often their content was shown next to posts that Facebook removed or misinformation or hate speech. So we have to be smarter as consumers. Now, I, it's funny. I sit here going, "Well, I'm doing business with both. I'm I'm on Facebook and I'm on and I'm my my phone services with Verizon." Well, I don't know what to tell you. When I see us talking about this, as opposed to how do we address the hate? You know, I mean, I just watched a video earlier today with Reverend Al Sharp Sharpton speaking in New York. And he said that when the story becomes about the response to the murder, as opposed to the murder itself, right? When you make the story no longer about George Floyd and reforming the Minneapolis Police Department or, or defunding it entirely, Instead, you make it about the protests and the riots, the reaction to the murder. What you're doing is excusing the murder. And I wholeheartedly support Sharpton calling attention on that point and saying, yes, don't mistake the story here. Don't You want to complain about looting? We're complaining about murder. Shut the frick up, really. You're, no, you're missing the point. And when people call attention to this, and I don't want to say, like, I don't want to be playing this game. Well, you're not fighting the greatest injustice, so you're not, your cause is unworthy of support. You need to fight the biggest injustice that I'm fighting to. Look at government. Look at the greater evil. But this, this whole thing about the manipulation of Facebook based on an emotional knee-jerk desire for censorship rather than addressing real issues, that's a problem.
And what I see here is, and, and in a lot of ways in American society, in a, a deliberate distraction with superficial issues that will perpetually prevent us from getting to the core of more important issues, whether it's corporatism and intellectual property, racism, or government itself, looking at the reaction instead of the heart of the problem and allowing yourself to be manipulated by this kind of activism fraud is holding us back from our potential and real progress with these issues. You know, I was going to connect it to another thing that uh, that we're looking at today in coronavirus resources. Like all this money to go in to fight coronavirus. Okay, that's and, and I'm I'm not gonna here here's here's like here's like my, here's my final argument from this prioritization perspective. Okay, yeah, coronavirus is a problem. You want this money to go to the vaccine. You want the government to do something about that. That's great. How many people are dying from coronavirus? Right. Like in most of the United States, what, what's, what's the top estimate? Like they could get up to 200,000. Like, okay, like so, so, so we grant you that 200,000. You just put this in perspective. Look at the resources being misallocated to this or over allocated to this problem. If you don't allocate resources appropriately, it means more people will die. You're worried about a splinter in your finger while you're bleeding out from uh, your your leg being chopped off. I can't sit here and just say, oh, yeah, that's OK. And, and with the coronavirus, yeah, it, it's hard to argue with it when you say well, they've got all these false statistics that, you know, you, you don't want to argue with those. But again, you just if, if, if people could be rational, if people were less prone to that emotional manipulation through propaganda, they wouldn't even attempt these fear campaigns to get us to misdirect resources to where it profits the people behind the racket.